Hey guys, welcome to Data Check, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will look at Twitter recommendation system. Twitter recently open sourced its code base and also published a blog highlighting the main components. We will go through the blog at high level and as well as try to understand how the recommendation system at Twitter is different from other social media platforms intuitively. So let's get started. There are many areas of the app where tweets are recommended like search, explore and ads. The recommendation system filters out a small set of tweets, top tweets from approximately 500 million tweets that are posted every day and these are displayed on device for you timeline. So basically we are talking about the personalization that out of 500 million tweets that are posted every day, a few tweets which may be more relevant to the users are personalized and displayed in their for you timeline which is the home page. And the recommendation system uh, setup, like any other recommender system, the Twitter's recommender system also consists of three main stages. One is candidate sourcing, which is the retrieval layer, where the best tweets from different recommendation sources are retrieved. Then followed by a ranking, where ML model ranks these tweets, and what, is, what should be the ordering at which they should be displayed to the uh, users in their home page. And also third stage is applying some heuristic and filters, like filtering tweets from blocked or muted users and balancing a good mix of tweets so it doesn't happen same type of tweet or same type of content is repeating right so it's like different uh, mix or diversity is there in the home feed and also appreciate if user has provided some negative feedback that he doesn't like to see this tweet or this kind of tweet or tweet from a particular user so appreciate those feedbacks and uh, so the final feed so tweets are there 500 million tweets then candidate generator source a bunch of tweets which are ranked by the ranker and followed by some heuristic and filters is shown in the home page finally. Uh, next is the candidate sources. So uh, the retrieval layer, right? So candidate sourcing sources 1500 tweets, 50% from people you follow, that is your in network and 50% from people you don't follow out of network. And this is where the difference between Twitter and other social media platform uh, lies. So basically other social media platform like Facebook, Instagram, they show more content from your friends. but Twitter since it's a social media app where you try to understand what is happening around the world and topics that you are interested in, what the influencers are saying on that about that. That's why it's important to have more uh, candidate or tweets or source uh, candidate sources from out of network as well. So 50% from in network people you follow and 50% from people you don't follow out of network. And now let's understand how in network sourcing happens, right? For the Getting the in-network tweets, the in-network source uses a logistic regression model and a real graph. This is a graph algorithm of Twitter to rank tweets from user you follow. So it uses a logistic regression and real graph to rank tweets from user you follow, the in-network. The logistic regression model efficiently ranks tweets based on their relevance, while the real graph predicts the likelihood of engagement between two users and help prioritize tweets from those you have a stronger connection with. So basically, the real graph model will try to push up the tweets of the users you follow and you have a stronger connection with. While logistic regression will finally rank all these uh, tweets and 750 of them will be sent to the ranker because the rest 750 will come from the out network. Now understanding the out of network source tweets, Twitter uses two approaches to find relevant tweets outside user social network. One is social graph and another is embedding spaces. Social graph estimates relevance by analyzing the engagement of people you follow or those with similar interest using GraphJet, which is another graph model of Twitter. So basically, the people you follow, what are they engaging? Uh, and also the interest you have, what are other users with similar interest are engaging with this kind of content, which are not directly in your network, but uh, people of your network are engaging with or people with similar interest are engaging with are uh, sourced. And this is done using a GraphJet, uh, GraphJet Twitter's graph model. It generates candidates tweets based on recent engagement. If any recent activities have happened, that also are taken care of and ranks them using a logistic regression model. So this is how the out of network uh, one part of it, the social graph works. The other part is embedding spaces because embeddings are uh, very hot these days and um, they are very useful in uh, uh, like once you have the embedded representation of users tweets, you can do approximate nearest neighbor to find the relevant tweets and also the, next is the embedding space. In embedding spaces. Uh, we need to generate numeric representation of users and tweets in community space. So basically users and tweets needs to be uh, represented as a vector, right, on which we can do an approximate nearest neighbor search. So embedding space generate numerical representation of users and tweets in community space. Now what is this community? Twitter has a, 
has a algorithm called sim cluster twitter sim cluster algorithm discovers communities anchored by influencer users using a custom matrix factorization algorithm so basically all the influencers the main celebrities they are uh, clustered into communities for example here you can see this is a community of pop this is a community of news this is a community of something else and so on so all these influencers who have like more followers who uh, people consider as celebrities they are uh, clustered into communities and uh, then uh, all the users and tweets are embedded or the embeddings are generated in, in this community space which is around 10 to 5 communities is what the blog says now that the next point is as i was saying users and tweets are embedded into this community space or community dimension so the idea of this is that users can be there are, there are almost uh, 205 million which is uh, 20.5 crore users uh, that are daily active in twitter but we need to represent them in a condensed way and that condensed way is the community those communities are around 10 to 5 1 lakh communities 0.1 million communities is what the block says so these users and tweets are embedded into a smaller space which is the community space and it's very easy to embed them into this space because tweets are embedded into these communities by looking at their current popularity in each community, right? Similarly, users can be embedded into communities based on their affinity towards community. A user can be interested in pop, news, and uh, maybe UFC, something like that, right? So, uh, a user can be interested in dozen of communities and his uh, uh, value of those dimension representing those communities will be high, right? So, in this way, tweet and users are embedded into the community dimension or community space. Finally, there is the uh, ranking model because they, the retrieval has happened and as well as uh, from in-network, out-network, the retrieval has happened. Next step is the ranking ML, using ML model. 1500 candidates sourced, that is from in-network, out-network, are ranked through a 48 million parameter neural network that is continuously trained on tweet interactions, taking into account thousands of features to predict the engagement probability, that what is the probability of user liking, retweeting or replying to a tweet. So, and which have higher probability, those will come higher in the home field of user. And after candidate sourcing ranking, there is a filtering step and blending step. In filtering, as we have already quickly uh, touched before, uh, after ranking, heuristics and filters are applied to filter out tweets from blocked or muted users and also a good mix of tweets so that not same kind of content is getting repeated is done. And at the last step, after filtering, the system blends together tweets with other non-tweet content like ads or follow recommendations, whom to follow and onboarding prompts which are returned to user device to display. So finally, the ranked content is blended with ads, follow recommendations and onboarding prompts. So the home page pipeline runs 5 billion times per day and completes in under 1.5 seconds on average. So this is how the this is how the recommendation system at Twitter works. There is a retrieval layer which is candidate sourcing both from in-network and out-network followed by a ranker and then followed by filtering and heuristics and finally blending with uh, ads, follow recommendations and other recommendations which is shown to the user in their home feed. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Please like and subscribe and also stay tuned for more such updates. Bye.